and we are here we are here it is um friday december 1 8 in the year 2020 and you know it's wild some people thought we'd never make it to 2020 some people they called naysayers and that's a naysayer and you say it and they say nay and that's a naysayer, bro. But here we are. You know, and we are just rambling through time. It's kind of interesting. Even if I just sit down and do nothing, I'm still traveling at the speed of time. It's really interesting when you think about it. You could lay in a bed. You could be in a damn coma, bro. You could be in a food coma and a real coma. You could have been in a car accident after Thanksgiving. And so you double comb it. Laying there. I mean, just still as a damn frozen orphan. And, uh, and you're still traveling through time. You still clocking miles, you know. I think it was maybe episode 60 or something. They had Tiny Sand who came through with a very, with just a, just that ear tickler, that seasonal ear tickler from the great Tiny Sand who. Let's hear it a little bit right now. Remember that? Remember Tiny? Come on. That's Jingle Bells. Who could forget that, man? Who could forget that, man? And that was almost, that was probably, you know, 140 episodes, 240 episodes ago or something. Jesus, what have we been talking about in here? I mean, what have we been talking about? Um... I'm grateful to still be here with you. I'm st- I'm grateful, and I hope that you are. Uh, I hope you're leaning into the holidays. You know, I didn't realize it was the holidays suddenly, and then bam, bro. You know, like a brother with a freaking, uh, you know, like a brother with a ski mask. This shit just rolls up on you. You know, bam, the holidays is right there, and um, and suddenly here we are. And it is that time of year, man. It is that time of year when you get to feel it a little bit. And especially in such a wild year. Let me play a couple of sounds that remind me of Christmas. That's the sound of like maybe somebody... You know, somebody's just like on a second date and they decide that they actually like each other or something. And they just kind of like, you know, start to, they're having whipped cream or something. They put it on each other's face or something. You know, and then she kind of smirks and he kind of like, maybe he hides behind a tree or something. And then she, uh, you know, um spills her eggnog in the park and he's like oh I didn't do it you know so that's a little bit of Christmas right there euphoria right there that's called A Christmas Dance by Arthur Benson and let's see if we got another sound right here Oh damn, this when you high as hell, bro. This 
when you high as hell, bro. That's when you believe in um. That's when you believe you drive a reindeer. That's when you believe that. Um, dude, the other night, so I went to this deal over here. Oh, a couple things happened to me. So one, people's getting soft, man. People is getting soft. Dude, they not fully baking people anymore. Some people, they seem like, like I was, when I was born, I was baked at probably about 450 degrees for nine months. You know what I'm saying? That's how, to, that, that's how I rolled out of mama. But you got MFers out here, some soft batch cotton boys out here just. Dude, here's what happened. So I went to this town called Bowling Green, Kentucky. And it is the home of uh, Fruit of the Loom drawers. Uh, so if you ever been wearing them Fruit of the Looms, baby, you know, if you ever got your fruit all loomed up, then you know them them bitches came straight out of Kentucky. That's basically Kentucky that's holding you nuts, bruh. Kentucky that's holding your ivories, bruh. Gotcha. Um, you know, they're just supporting your low batch, daddy. But um, what I'm telling you is this. So I went there to look at some different vehicles. I've been vehicle shopping. So I decided I'm gonna get me a hotel, stay over there for the for the evening. Dude, the guy behind, I, I go knock on the door of the hotel, and I understand it's COVID times, bro. The disease is out. So first, the guy comes to the window of the, ho the hotel, the door, glass door, and looks at me like I'm COVID. Like, oh, who's here? Is COVID here? Like, bitch, I'm not COVID. You know what I'm saying? I'm regular, baby. So anyway, the guy, it was just so ridiculous. Like looking at me like he was going to be able to judge if I had the disease through the glass. So anyway, he lets me inside and um, I was like, say, hey, dude, man, do you guys have a room here? He's like, yeah, we got a room. Uh, let me go see if it's clean or not. I was like, all right. You know, and he goes upstairs. Literally, he was upstairs for probably about 15 minutes. Obviously, he should have cleaned it earlier. That's in his job description. And he didn't. And how do I know that? Because I've been a lazy motherfucker like this dude. That's why. That's why I know because I've been that dude. I've been the dude that shows up to work and doesn't work. And I look, I did. I was really good at that. So anyway, man, finally he comes down. And uh, at this point, I'm thinking, man, I might as well just, I might just want to drive back. Um. You know, it's only like an hour and a half to where I'm go to back home to my place here. So anyway, so whatever. He's looking on the computer and stuff and and at a certain point I'm kinda get I'm getting antsy. You know, it's been a while and it's getting late. I want to go get something to eat and I know restaurants are kind of closing. A lot of things close now at like eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So we uh, I'm giving him a little bit of pressure, you know, like um you know, can you uh, can you run my card or you know is there anything I can do to help? Saying stuff like that, like a passive aggressive. That's what they call it. Um, when you pretend like you are um, a teddy bear, but you really a bad bitch, kind of, you know. Um, so anyway, he, sorry. Finally, he goes, look, I'm sorry, sir. Okay. But I just need you to relax a little bit. I used to be in a wheelchair. I was like, what, bro? You used to be in a wheelchair? You used to be? That's what we're doing now? People are just saying, you know. Look, hey, man. R look, I, w I used to weigh 11 pounds, 9 ounces when I was born, okay? Huh. Calm down. Cut me some slack here. That guy said, I used to be in a wheelchair. When, bitch? You broke your leg once? You know, you did some fucking dirty karate somewhere, bruh? I just don't, un it just, man. Don't make me hit you with that rat jitsu, bruh. Tighten this white dude up. Sorry, man, I'm sorry. Getting out of line, but it just, man, I don't know, man. That shit, 
Uh, like, uh, it just, like, hey, hey, buddy. Look, I had acne when I was 14. If you could give me a little bit of room here, okay? Hey, hey, guy. You know, I vomited a, a, in the middle of a school play when I was nine, okay? If you could just step back and show some respect. It's just like, what are we doing, man? Hey, man, I used to be in a wheelchair. Well, bitch, then get in a wheelchair now if you in it. You know, I'm sorry, man, but that shit just got me heated up. Like somebody just threw some damn warm briquettes in my ass, bro. You know, that's where I'm at with this shit. Just, hey, hey, man, look, you know, I, uh, I was, a, I was, I used to be four years old. Okay. I was only three and a half feet tall at one time. If you could give me a little bit of room here. It's just like, now we're like using whatever our weakest moment was as our front. And I don't mind us sharing our weakest moment, man. I think there's a level of connection there. There's an opportunity, you know. You know, it's like we're trading vulnerability, you know. You know, uh, we're trading um, baseball cards there, you know. I'll give you a, you know, I feel uncomfortable outfielder and you give me a, um, look, man, sometimes I'm insecure shortstop and, you know, we, we recognize each other from those spaces. But I don't know if saying like, look, man, you know, somebody burned my hair off once, okay? Could you give me a little bit of, give me some, give me a moment. Should just lit me up a little bit. Anyway, that's where I'm at, man. But anyway, <laughs> what I meant to say is we're alive for another week. And this is the surprise that God gave us, man. This is it. Whatever it is, the good, the bad, the nasty, whatever, this is the, this is it. This is, this is the, hey, guess what's in my hand? And they show you, this is what's behind door number one through a jillion. This is it, baby. This is life. And you know what? I think we're, do I think we're doing okay with it. Thank you for being here. Come on, baby. I'm just sitting on your front porch Wondering how could I be so far from my oh, home Come on. Come on. My mind is somewhere else But when I find it, I'll patch up where it's been blown Hey, hey, look, buddy. I'm upstairs! Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself unwind. Shine that light on me. Come on, light. I'll sit and tell you my story. Shine on me. And I will find a song. I will sing it just for you. Way too fast on the runaway train with a heavy load of my And these wheels that I And there you go. Awkward fade out begins. I'm upstairs. Um, excuse me. I, look, I used to be in a wheelchair and he didn't even say when he was at least tell me when. When when you were six or last week. <sighs> It's like some people was baked at, you know, for 10 minutes at 100 degrees, bruh. And they got all these ingredients, but they ain't got no, they ain't nothing's holding them together. 
You know, and they got these soft batch out there, bruh. These soft batches. And that ain't us, baby. Now, I'm okay if we a little bit of a toll house morsel. I'm okay if we have that element of toll house morselility in us. Where we a little soft. But we gripping on the edges, baby gang shit. Um... Yeah, so that was wild, dude. I, and then, oh, also, I went and looked at a cave. Look, bro, I went. <laughs> I got to tell you this, man. Uh, oh, Santa's going to be here at the end of the episode. We got damn Santa. And we got a beautiful Santa, man. It's a, this, this man has been a liaison uh, to the North Pole and of, you know, just the vibe of giving. And we got a natural beard Santa, not one of these fake ass, you know, clip on bitches. We got a real, real, real man right here. We got freaking Chris Krangle, bruh. PG, baby. PTL, baby. You know what it is. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Um. Oh, so I went to this cave, right? <clears throat> so there's this thing if you go to Kentucky... And there is a cave there. Because I've been trying to be more outgoing. When I don't want to do something, I go do it. Um, the other day, I didn't want to go to jujitsu. Went over to Nashville MMA. Left out of there feeling like a champ. You know, some this lady put me in a sugar lock once. You know, and I, can't, I still can't feel two of my toes. And I can't wink out of one of my eyes, but... God's plan, bro. Um, what else am I talking about here? Uh, what were we saying? Man, my mind gets all rattly. Um, oh, I went in a cave. They got caves over there. And a cave is just basically like a... um. It's kind of like a mountain, but like I made out of air. And so... I went over, went, I was trying to just uh, do some touristing in this area. So I go hit this cave. I'm caving. And, um, well, first of all, at one point, they take you, it's a boat. You go under this part of the ground or, or whatever it is, earth rock. And they, they, you basically have to duck down inside of the boat. So you go, first you walk into the cave, then you get in this boat, then you go down this little river and they, uh, you get down, you have to go under the rock and you literally have to lay in the boat. Like if you put your head up at all, you will die. Like there is a, like, it's like 40 yards of just straight rock. Like you can't even, I can't even believe they'll let us do it as, as just a customer. You know, cause once I'm a customer, bro, I kind of, you know, I, once I'm a customer dog, once I give you five or six dollars or twelve dollars for an experience, I put my life in your hands. I kind of check out. I just assume, look, I gave them nine dollars, bro. I'm going to be safe, whatever I'm doing, you know. And it's a pretty sad, it's a pretty unfortunate and not very... You know, it's kind of the opposite, I feel like, of being like a Navy SEAL or a Marine. It's like being like a um, like a Navy skunk or something. You know, just, it's like I'm not really looking out for myself anymore, you know. It's like, oh, look, I trust you. Look, I gave you $7 here, you know, you taking me into the bat caves. I'm going to trust you're going to take care of me. So I'm like on my phone and shit. I'm not even paying. And literally almost died. Like, so the boat goes under the rock. We go through the cave. It's nice. It's fun. It's, you know, it's, 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 you're kind of pretending that it's more fun than it is. The guy's like, hey, here's a hole right here that, uh, you know, this hole's from 1904. And you're like, holy shit. My grandfather could have seen this hole, you know, just things like that. You, and you, you, you know, I find myself asking questions like, oh, really? And that's not a question, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like saying things that I don't even really want to say, you know, like, oh, wow, huh, huh, never would have thought of that. 
But anyway, just shit like that, you know. I'm upstairs. But this this episode's really gone off the rails, man. Um. Anyway, bro, what I'm telling you is, oh, at the end of the thing, here's what happened. At the end of the thing, the guy says, and I want to thank you guys for coming today, and I want to also let you know that um, only like 30 years ago, this entire cave <laughs> was filled <laughs> with trash, right? He, this whole tour, he'd been telling us how beautiful the cave was and the temperature and the, how there's only one fish that comes, this little fish named Anna or something, little Anna show up. And she's the only one that come in the cave and they, you know, where's Anna tonight? He's like shining a flashlight in the water and all of this cutesy stuff, you know? And I'm just in the back like, you know, oh, really? You know, just, you know, I'm being a, I'm being a customer. I'm being a customer. That's what you do. I give you $7. You walk me through the thing. I say, no way. And we, and we, and you know, and I don't die. And you get me back to where we started and we go our separate ways. Maybe I buy a gift at the gift store. Usually I do. Oh yeah, at the very end he's like, and also I just want to thank everybody for buying a ticket today. You know, the caves used to be, uh, only 20 years ago, these caves were filled entirely to the top with, and then he start just rattling off. Just complete bullshit. It's like washers and dryers, petroleum, uh, trash. He's like, people came from all around to throw their trash in these caves. He's like, they even found half of a mobile home in here. Now, where was the other half? <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, and I'm like, oh, really? Anyway, bro, it was just crazy that basically what I toured was like a hollowed out landfill. <laughs> like, basically, somebody tricked me into touring out a hollowed out landfill in Kentucky <laughs> for about $13. So, anybody out there that says you can't start a small business, <laughs> man. Get you a shovel and get you some bullshit and get you a square reader for your phone. And I bet you you're going to be good, man. Um, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. I want to let you know that we are celebrating. This is not an ad. I mean, it is, but it's not. But it's like on January 15th, 8 p.m., I'm going to try and do some different sketches and unique stuff. We're doing a live show. Myself and this woman named Chelsea Lynn, and she was on the podcast, and she um, plays Trailer Trash Tammy. And I'm excited about it. You know, it's going to be live. So you buy a ticket. The tickets are $10. That's a reasonable ticket. I thought about a ticket. I said, well, what's a ticket that's reasonable? I said, well, look, you spend that, they'll do a raffle. You know, I remember when I was young, um, my grandfather won a uh, damn wheelbarrow. And he was fired up, man. He pushed me around in that bitch. And, and then he got to drinking, really, and I never really saw him again after that. But, uh, but before that, man, uh, but I'm just saying, look, $10 is a decent amount. But it's not a crazy amount. And you can be able to sit on your couch and watch a live show. We are putting on a show. This is going to be uh, Theo and Tammy's belated Christmas talent extravaganza. I'm producing this thing. It's going to be lights out. I hope so. <laughs> Hopefully the actual lights don't go out. Because the one thing we need to pull it off is electricity. So you can buy a ticket now in advance. And just remember to tune in uh, that Friday evening. There's nothing going on that evening. I checked. There's no big football. Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor is going to fight the week uh, later. Uh, so you're good. You can tune in. It's going to be fun. we got some dope sketches. Uh, we're going to have a live talent show. Um, we're going to be hosting the whole evening. Uh, we got some live musical performers. Um, it should be similar to that show, Hee Haw. There's an old show on YouTube if you get to check it out. H-E-E-H-A-W. Um... And you know what? I'm looking forward to it, man. 
I really wanted to make it a special night. So I hope that you'll be there uh, with me and support. Um, there'll be a live chat where people can chat during it if they want to. Uh, and you'll also be able to watch it for like, um, I think, a few days afterwards online. So um, I want to let you know right now that 2020 was rocky. It was rocky like your nuts, daddy. But it's New Year, New Balls with our sponsor, Manscaped. By now, there's, I mean, Manscaped is the only, I feel like it's the only people in the below the belt grooming game. If you let yourself go in 2020, you grew a hair, you grew a, um, some people grew a little, you know, little just a Rapunzel off their nuts. Some people just grew that fucking, you know, somebody, some people drew just, just that little badger tuft. Off the back of their ass, bro. Off the top of that lookout. Off the top of that brown lookout, you got that little badger tuft. But now you can change that all up. Manscaped is here for you to reboot and stay clean and shaved in 2021. I've had a ton of body hair, man. I remember, and I've shared this before, the first time I shaved my body hair and I mailed it to my mother in a bag. Because she, it was, you know, it's hair, it's back hair, back hair back hair and this back hair i'd had since i was a child you know oh excuse me man you know i used to be a, I, I used to be uh five years old so if you could relax a little <laughs> um anyway the third generation trimmer with skin safe technology the skin safe trimmer will reduce nicks to your body and your ball bag if you have any 2020 was awful so make sure you're Boys are refreshed and ready to go for 2021. Manscaped even threw in their shed travel bag. To keep all your goodies stored comfortably. A guy with hairy balls is like the year 2020. Don't be that guy. Get 20% off in free shipping at manscaped.com slash T-H-E-O. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash Theo. That's 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com slash Theo. Happy New Year to you and your balls. Do you have a hard time taking pills? I do. You know, I remember somebody gave me a pill once and uh and honestly it was my friend uh Billy Conforto RIP. And he's probably was one of the I bet he's one of the 60 or 70 greatest uh homosexual prize fighters that never fought for money honestly and i miss him every day man and we actually we gotta you know we we need to we're, we're gonna build a bench over there in his honor near where he lived over there in uh, la place louisiana but um he gave me a pill one time and i drove off the road not long after he gave it to me and honestly i thought the dude might have tried to give me a bj while i was passed out but i don't think he did you know and and praise God, bro. But um, but anyway, uh, and that's why I don't take pills, man. And I never have really. Uh, but um, what I'm saying is, if you have a hard time taking pills, uh, vi uh, you're not alone. Get the only sildenafilin tadalafil chewables by visiting BlueChew.com. If you like sex, you'll love BlueChew.com. They offer men a performance enhancement. For the bedroom at bluechew.com, you can get the first chewables with active ingredients. Uh, Sildenafil and tadalafil, tadalafil. Um, the chewables from Blue Chew can be taken on a full or empty stomach, and that's nice. You could have a damn half a pint of, pot of uh, rice aroni and still do you a little dick upper. The online physician consult is free, so it's cheaper than those other two pills. It only takes a few minutes to connect with a Blue Chew affiliated physician. The chewables from BlueChew.com are made in the USA. You ain't getting them foreign uh, hitters. And trust me, I've gotten them foreign tongue fucking hitters, baby, and them bitches will make your legs sweat, but keep your penis, uh, you know, real soft, cotton soft. They call that cotton dick. 
Anyway, here's a great deal for you guys. Visit bluechew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code T-H-E-O. Just pay $5 shipping. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Promo code Theo. That's all I really know at the moment. Let me thank um we had a lot of great calls that came in. We got Santa's coming. Santa. Santa's coming. Dude, I remember growing up in Louisiana, they had a they did an event every year. And an event is like something where you don't you know, it's like regular time, but it's more special than that. And um they used somebody would fly in a plane through the air around town and they would play Christmas music out the plane. This was a small plane, a crop duster. So they put on these jovial tunes and they would hit the air. And so moms, they would bring us outside on the porch about maybe 640 and say, do you hear it? Do you hear it? And they would just be like dashing through the snow. You know, it would be the song I mean, you hear and it would just be, it would blow your mind. And it lifted you up with that Christmas spirit. And I thought that that was so special that a town did that, that they invested in that sort of thing. And I think that that's important, that kind of stuff. Because that, you know, who knows if that moment right there might have, you know, kept the magic alive in me. And made me believe in things because, you know, Santa is something you believe in, but it's something that's just your, it's just your first kind of, it's kind of like your first romance in a weird way. You know, you're hopeful and you're excited and there's possibility and there's a date. There's December 25th. And it's just... You know, it has all the elements of romance, but no sex. Nobody getting sex. And there's something that, that, that you know, there's something special about that. Because I think if you can make that time romantic enough to a child and, an, you know, or, you know, r- r- you know, romance, but non-sexual to a, you know, if you can make it entertaining enough to a child in that way, then it can, um, they'll carry that same ambiance. And the same belief of possibility into the world in other aspects, man. Um, I want to thank you guys for supporting the podcast. I want to thank you guys for being a part of my life this year. And uh, I know I say that a lot, but I think sometimes it's just hard for me to get across. Um, you know, I haven't been feeling good this year. You know, I have not been feeling. And I say that a lot. I think I might have a pinched nerve in my neck or in my back. Finally got an MRI today. Um, but I've just, you know, this shit sounds freaking gay, bro, but it's been in pain a lot or not gay, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, painful, but just kind of like, you know, I sound like that dude, like, Hey man, you, I, you know, I used to have baby teeth. If you don't mind, look, if you don't mind, bro, I used to be in the third grade. Okay. Um, we had some great calls that came in. And uh, I want to thank Kenny again last week from Portland who um, gave away a nice gift and, and promoted others uh, to do the same thing. Here's a call that came in. Hello, Theo. This is Bert from the Dirty South. Dirty Birdie. Let's hear it, baby. Um, I was just calling in to let you know I just finished your third place babies episode. And, man, that thing just... Who blew my mind with all the calls about the donations for the PS5 and people were just reaching out to you, man. It really, it touched my heart, really. It made my heart, like, blow up, like, you know, like the Grinch, really. Like, Oh, hell yeah. That's like God taking a big puff off that love joint and blowing that bitch right into your fucking third lung, baby. That love lung, the heart. Gang shit. Onward. It just it warmed my chest. Mm-hmm. It's seven oh nine in the AM down here in uh, Austin, Texas, and um, that's Joe Rogan country down there. 
Isn't that wild? That's Joe Rogan country down there. Onward. I just wanted to call to let you know how that how that made me feel. Um, uh, I guess I kind of, I guess it kind of makes me, you know, it like rejuvenates my, my, uh, my, uh, my spirit and like my Christmas spirit. And, uh, I just wanted to call you and thank you for that. And, uh, that's it, I guess. Appreciate everything you do, man. Gang brother. And that's not it, man. That's a lot. You know, you saying that is a lot. And, uh, you know, being a man that's brave enough to make that call and just say, hey, man, thank you. This made me feel a certain way. You know, that means a lot. That's hard to do sometimes. Um, you know, as men, we get so, we don't get acclimated to letting our feelings also be a badge of courage or a sword or a shield, you know? You know, I can tell you something made me feel a certain way, but also at the same time, be powerful with it. You know, and I think in the future, we're really going to learn and really start to acclimate um, to what these other powers we have are, even in our, in our own vulnerability. Because I think there's a way to be powerful and be vulnerable. But not be weak. Um... But thank you, man. That means a lot to me that at 7.09 a.m., man, that, look, it all started, man, that guy, Kenny, called in wanting to be nice. Dude, my friend Dan Lagana called in the other day. He created a show called American Vandal on um, on Netflix. He's uh, working on this new, um, the Tiger King series, and he's just uh, talented and just a heart, just a man that's all heart, bro. He must have 40 aortas, bro. And he called, and I didn't even know he listened to the podcast. And he called and he said, hey, man, I just want to say I listen to your episode. And if there's anything I can do to give, if there's another mom out there I can give to, let me know. And first of all, it just touched me so much that, because he said, hey, man, it really touched me. And it just, man, that was, you know, that was cool, man. First of all, here's a guy that I really admire who's like saying, man, I listen to your podcast. I'm like, that's so cool, bro. Thank you. That's crazy. Um, and then that he cared, you know, just that it made him feel. Um, and I, and it was just nice. It was just, and meant so many people called wanting to then give and do something and like, I don't know. <clears throat> there was honestly just not, there was no way to facilitate it all. There was just no way to facilitate it all in such a last minute way. Um, but maybe next year we'll do like a platform or something uh, to see, you know, what's possible. Um, but thank you to everybody that called. I mean, so many people called in offering to be of help. Pretty powerful, man. Um, let's take another call. It came in right here. Hey, Theo, this is Melissa from Houston, and um, I just got through listening to um, the latest podcast, um, Third Place Babies, and wow, just, um, man, that one really hit me. Uh, such, what a great podcast, and you have the, be the best fans, the best audience, they're so generous, um, and uh, just thank you for that episode. Um and I, it made me think of what I could, um, what I could give to you. And well, I can't, you know, literally, I guess, really give you anything. But um, I just thought if I could give to you, I would, for, I would give you the ability to feel okay and to really, really feel how much you're loved because you are. Um, that's my wish for you for this Christmas holiday, and it'll be in my prayers for you. And um, just thank you. Thank you for that episode. It really touched me. And, um, and that's it. Well, thank you, uh, Melissa. That's sweet of you. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that, you know, that's very sweet of you. And, I, um, and just a lot of calls came in like that of people that just felt... 
Just felt something. Man, just felt something. You know, so much, so, so, so many times in life, I, man, I just want to feel something, man. I just want to feel something. And life can get mundane. It can get monotonous. It can get where we focused on the, the Excel spreadsheet instead of the Excel lens that can happen between humans and, and from moments and, uh, You know, thank you. Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I wish I had a bottle of OK pills that I could take in the morning. You know, I've never really felt OK, man. Woman, sorry, Melissa. I've never, I just... You know, it's funny, in, uh, in working with sponsors over the years and, and working in some 12-step stuff and... A lot of times I find I would call my sponsor and I'd say, hey, is everything okay? And they'd be like, yeah, man, what do, what do you mean? I was like, it's just, it's just tell me everything's okay, please. Just tell me everything's okay. And, and they'd be like, yeah, everything's fine, man. Everything is fine. And I think I just never, you know, I never heard that. I never heard that growing up. Nobody was around to say, hey, man, everything's okay. Everything is okay. So I always was just frenetic. It was like I was always this loose wire that had come down in a storm and no one ever addressed it really. And it's nobody's fault. It's just, it's just you know, that's how I was. And I'm not sad about it or anything. I'm just, you know, being okay was never something that I was. Uh, so that's sweet of you. You know, and maybe that's a nice, that'd be a nice New Year's resolution for me to just think about everything's okay. And if you need to hear that, you know, my friend Bill Morris, man, he's a white guy, and uh, which is easily to be expected from the name Bill Morris. But he texted me, um, this is probably a year ago, and it just said, hey, it just said, everything is okay. And I talked to him a few days later. I was like, hey, man, why did you send that? What was going on? He just said, hey, I just, I had a feeling maybe you were in a space where you didn't know if everything was okay. And so I just wanted you to know it was. And so I just, that's what I sent. And I was like, man, it's so funny. Because right when I read it, I was like, all right, bro. All right. Everything is going to be okay. And so I'm telling you that, you know. If your year's been choppy or if you, you know, you don't know if you're doing okay raising your kid or if you, um, if you don't know if you're loved or if you don't know if, man, I don't know, this shit got me feeling some type of way now. Yeah, if you don't know if everything's going to be okay, I'm just... I'm sending you this audio text right now just saying, hey, bro, you know, everything, everything's going to be okay. You're doing good. You know, you're okay as you are. Damn, bro. I'm going to get, I'm going to hear about this at jujitsu, bro, but, but, uh, but no, for real, man, you, you know. You're doing good. If you don't know if you're a good brother, you don't know if you're a good boyfriend, you don't know if you're a good husband, you don't know if you're a good wife, you don't know if you're a good human, you don't know if you really have any relationship with God, but you know he's looking for you, any of that kind of like, like, I'm not here to give you any message, I'm just letting you know that, it, you know, wherever you are, it's, you're okay, you know. And that everything is going to be fine. Um, and I don't even know why I'm saying that right now. I just, but I feel some type of way, bro. And I feel really compelled to say that. So, praise God, man. But thank you, Melissa. Yeah, I... I, I, I uh, 
I think my whole life I've just had to try to be something because I never knew what I was. And I, you know, and, 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 and there, and, and I used to feel sad about that sometimes, but now it's like, look, that's, that's how you get different things. That's how you get art. That's how you get things, perspectives. Um, but thank you for those warm wishes, Melissa. That's really sweet of you. Uh, let's hear what else we got here. Um, we got a couple of other, honestly, some of these are just nice messages that came in. And so I'm going to play some of them. And then we got Santa's going to be in here in about 10 minutes, bro. Freaking Santa. Can you believe it? Hi, Fear. Um, my name's Renee. I'm from Brisbane, Australia. Hello, Renee. And thank you for calling here from Brisbane. And God, I love Australia, man. Sorry, I was just imagining me just really fucking Australia, bro, because I just love it. Onward. Um, I was just calling to say um, in your last episode, you gave away that PS5 and it prompted you to give to some other single moms, like the gift card and the Xbox, maybe. Um, yeah, and we did. We followed up with those moms and carried through with those things. Um, and I know you're not taking me to task. I just wanted listeners to know. Uh, and you know what? I'll, I'm going to hit up a few more. Some other people. Some other people did submit. People. I'm going to. I'm going to hit up a few more tomorrow, and um, just see what else we can do. Um, you know, and I and I wish I I wish I'd have known how much outreach there was going to be in offers for help because I would have planned ahead and had somebody you know on staff to help more and maybe Nick can help out and uh, we can get Sean to help out here. Um, onward. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Renee. And I just wanted to let you know it's really inspired me to put in a bit more effort this Christmas, help a few more people out. Like, I think we all sometimes get stuck in our own bubble and we just want to help ourselves. Um, but yeah, you've made me realize there's more out there and it's been great. It's, yeah. Seeing people smile makes me smile, you know? Um, I do know. You know, I, 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 I really can relate to that. It's so funny. Uh, so often, like, I, I just never, i never been a big, you know, I've always been an envious when I'm doing uh, stand-up, which seems like doesn't even exist anymore, but I've always been envious of the crowd. I've always been envious. I just want, you know, I want to sit there and I want to, man, they're having fun. They're laughing. You know, I just always, I think, I think what I wanted to be the most, I wanted to be that person in the crowd. But I just have never been really good. I've just never been good at having that much joy. Um, I'm always so concerned. I'm always scared. You know, my best friend uh, growing up, this fellow Will Teague, man, and he's a, you know, if they ever, if they ever make a space shuttle that's taking people directly to heaven and they put two people in it, he should damn be one of them. But, um, uh, you know, he, I grew up always at his house and I got to see his mother years later and she said, you were always such a scared kid. And I said, dang, man, was I. Um, but anyway, uh, going back to what you said there, Renee, um, yeah, I always... I've always admired the people in the crowd that were having a good time. I always wanted to be them. But the only way I could get to even close was to be the person saying stuff to get people to laugh. You know, it was like the closest I could get was, man, maybe if I create enough of that, I'll, I'll become it. Um, and there's probably more in there. But look, that all started with Kenny from Portland. So you pinning the tail on the wrong donkey. 
Hey, Theo, this is Kenny calling from Portland. Uh, I had an idea here. I have a PlayStation 5 that I got from my work. Uh, I'm not really a big gamer. Right there. But I can relate to you, Renee, when you say, you know, I, it's not like, you know, I feel so sad. A couple of months ago, uh, this company sent me a sweatshirt. Same company that sent me this sweatshirt, Feet, it's called. And they got nice sweatshirts. And, and they're pricey, though. It's a pricey piece, man. I mean, it's cheaper to probably buy a damn lamb and hang it off your arms, you know, or carry it around your damn neck or, you know, get a fucking thick sheep and carry that bitch on you. But, um, but they sent me some sweatshirts and one of them, I knew it wasn't my style and I knew I didn't want to wear it. And I thought maybe I'll, you know, you know who would really look good in this? I thought was there's a woman who cleans my apartment. She comes once a week and that's okay. And she's awesome. And she's honestly so awesome. And I look forward to her coming. She speaks Spanish. I get to practice Spanish with her. And she brings her kids sometimes. And they're beautiful kids. And they're funny. And it's like this little connection I have to like, um, they're from Central America. It's like this little connection I have like to my father sometimes. And, um, and I knew, immediately I knew, man, I should just give that to her. I'm never going to wear I should just give it. And I didn't. You know, and that's fine. It's okay. I'm not crying about it. It's whatever. But it's like, I, I just, I want to get to the place in my life where I trust every little instinct that says, give this, give this, do this, do, give this. I want to be able to be that. Whatever that is. You know, whatever that is, I just, I, that's what I want to be, man. Um, but thank you, man. I look, all of us have been affected by Kenny's generosity and that's pretty dope. Insurance can be complicated and that's why the zebra was created. When you use the zebra.com insurance finally feels like it's in black and white. No more confusion, just honest rates from real companies. That's right. The zebra is the nation's leading insurance comparison site. For car and home insurance. You know, it's tricky when you go to get insurance. You don't know what the hell's going on on the site. And then, bam, praise God. You figure it out. And that's what the zebra does. A zebra.com answers a few questions to compare accurate insurance quotes for free. It's the easiest place to do it. Now, you're going to go to places. They're going to try to get your information. Don't give them that. Go to the zebra.com. It protects your personal information. Make sure there are no hidden fees or surprises. You can secure your insurance from thezebra.com over the phone from one of their very licensed insurance agents. How much money can you save on a car or home insurance? Car or home? Visit thezebra.com slash Theo. That's T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash T-H-E-O for insurance in black and white. That's it. Get your insurance. Stay insured. You got to. I'm also going to let you know right now that life can be stressful even under normal circumstances. 2020 has challenged even the most difficult parts of our lives. You need stress relief that goes beyond quick fixes. Yes, you do. And that's why you need headspace. You probably tried meditation before and it didn't work, right? Or maybe you felt like you were doing it wrong. That happens to me a lot. I'd be like, what am I just sitting here? What if I think of something? Is that okay? What am I, I don't know. Wouldn't it be great if there were a pocket-sized guide that helped you sleep, focus, act, be better? Well, there is. And if you have 10 minutes, headspace can change your life. If people keep telling you to try meditation and you're like, when? When would I have the time? Well, check out Headspace. You don't need to spend a ton of money to reconnect with yourself. You know, there's something beautiful that meditation has given me at times in my life when I've used it. It's given me a moment between hearing something and reacting. It's given me just a moment. Just a quarter inch of a moment. And that's where I can make a better decision. For a mood-boosting workout, check out headspace.com. Just 30 days of headspace, lower stress by 32%. Imagine that. 
and just four sessions can reduce burnout by 14%. Jesus, I will be on here tonight. Check out the Wake Up daily original content intended to inspire your day from the moment you wake up. You deserve to feel happier and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash T-H-E-O. That's headspace.com slash Theo for a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Go to headspace.com slash Theo today. And I got to say, man, I have used Headspace and they have a great way of taking you through how to meditate. It's not just like, okay, now you're meditating. It's, okay, here's how you do it. They're actually, they're saying the questions that arise in my head so that I navigate it and then it's okay. And then it becomes a practice. Man, you talk about working on the outside, working out on the outside, try working out on the inside, and that is head space. All right, we got a, a call. What's up, Theo? This is Shane from California. Um, Sugar Shane, baby. And I know a couple Shanes was gay men that I knew. And I'll be honest with you, brother. And I'm not saying anything, and it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who you love, Shane, but a lot of times a gay man will have the name Shane and they call him Sugar Shane. Onward? I was just calling to uh, talk to you about something my son wanted to talk to me about last night. He comes in from the cul-de-sac playing with all the kids and he says, Dad, I need to talk to you. Can you come back to my room? And I said, yeah, because... He's got younger brothers, and he said, Dad, is uh, Santa Claus real? Mm. Now, he's a fifth grader, so maybe he should already know, maybe not. I don't remember when I found out, but he heard through the word of the cul-de-sac that... The sack chat, they call it, gang, bro. Santa Claus wasn't real. So he told me he wanted me to be real with him and i was real with him and i damn is he a little brother dog he wants you to be real with him praise god baby onward laid it down and he i could see a little bit of the little boy kind of seep out of him a little Mm. bit you know with that santa magic disappearing um damn you hit him with the damn truth huh it was kind of a um uh it was a real it was a real conversation mm-hmm. and um anyways with christmas coming uh i thought there might be a lot of uh conversations like the one i had with uh other people's kids um anyways i hope you have a good christmas out there and Nashville, Tennessee. Uh. Thanks, brother. Amen, man. I appreciate it. And thanks for the call. And, you know, uh, I remember somebody told us Santa died when I was young. And God. God, it was hell, man. And I remember our neighbors even at one point tried to do a thing where they buried a fake Santa like they did a damn fake funeral. And had a little bit of like a Santa, a little, you know, like a fat sleeve hanging out that bitch or whatever. You know, half a gift, you know, quarter of a, uh, you know, Teddy Ruxpin. Um, you know, or, you know, one, you know, they have, you know, some damn Voltron or something hanging out that bitch. And they say Santa's dead, you know, or something. So, yeah, there was a lot of staged things going on. People trying to save money, parents. You know, somebody, a parent would spend all the money on dope and then they'd do a fake fire and throw a half a Santa suit in it. Say, oh, damn, Santa fucking, you know, cooked himself off doing, you know, doing dope or whatever. Um, But what are we talking about, man? Uh, Oh, yeah, it's hard to tell them. 
I think it's hard to tell the kids. I don't have any kids, you know, and I, I need to have a damn kid soon. But what I am telling you is this, man, um, that I think a way to tell them is say, look, Santa's alive as long as you want him to be alive. And the second you quit believing in him, he doesn't exist anymore. Because that, because then you, I feel like you might be setting them up for a good metaphor in the in their growing lives. Now, whatever you put your faith in, whatever you really practice and you put your energy into, it could be meditation, it could be loving your spouse, it could be, you know, aiming to be a better parent, it could be um, learning art, it could be stand up comedy, it could be anything. If you keep believing in it, then it has a life. If you keep practicing it, then it has uh, an existence. Things aren't just alive out there. We have to make them happen. Whether they be dreams whether they be visions, whether they be businesses, whether they be love, whether they be self-worth, whether they be anything. You know, whatever you focus on grows, baby. And, and I'm not preaching at you, I'm not. I mean, it's some of this stuff, I'm just, you know, it's the stuff we kind of always talk about in here and I don't even know why we do sometimes, but that's okay and and this is our world and uh but look I, I applaud you for being there in that moment and staying in the moment some dads would throw a beer at the kid you know or go piss and never come back say I'm gonna tell you when I go I'm gonna go piss I'm gonna tell you when I get back you know but you being honest you being honest dad but yeah, the second that you, whatever it is in the world, if you keep the magic alive, the magic stays alive. So we can take that out into the world, man. Look, there's some other great calls that came in and I want to get to some of them. Um, but Santa Claus is coming to town. And, uh, you know, I'm excited, man. I'm excited they did that in my small town. Somebody went out of their way to do something special to make me feel as a kid for probably extra years that Santa was real. And who knows what hearing that sleigh go by in the, in the sky made me do or made me feel or made me believe. Who knows? Who knows the residual effect of taking a little bit of time out and making somebody feel good or doing something extra. Who knows, baby? You better watch out. You better not cry. You better watch out. I'm telling you now. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleepy. He knows when you're out late. He knows if you've been bad or good, so you better give him a break. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Shorty, work, work, work! Damn, sorry, that song just obviously took a detour into Atlanta. Today's episode is brought to you by Magic Mind. You know, it's the alternative. It's the alternative to uh, energy, uh, to five-hour energy. You want a flow state. It's, it's the flow state you want. It's the ability to create flow state in your life. You know, take, having coffee in the morning, having, a, 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 you know, a monster energies. And that's crazy. You pouring fucking Frankenstein right down your throat. You pouring Dracula right down your throat. Try Magic Mind. It's the alternative. It's the organic five-hour energy. It is, you can create your own flow state. 
Help yourself be your best self. Magicmind.co. Use promo code Theo for 10% off. All right, let's get to the guest now. Uh, today's guest <clears throat> needs no introduction. Um, and you know, I don't even know how we get introduced to this man in our lives. But we're so very grateful that he exists. And he's here today with us. This is the man himself, the stepson of Father Time. Mr. K. Kringle, they call him up in the hood, baby. Chris Kringle, Santa Claus. Yeah, because I'm just like, do you even get cell service like if you're in the sky? Uh, I do. My sleigh and reindeer are all fully equipped with their, all the latest technology. Really? You guys got yep. the, like the technology package? Oh, absolutely. Oh, dang, we great. were retrofitted about uh, four years ago. Wow, that's wild. Um, has there been like... Um, like this year has it been a lot scarier for kids to like request gifts has there been like a lot less interaction like what's that been like for you like interacting with the kids well for me where i'm at four days a week it's same business as usual however there are some parents that want their children to still socially distance so we put them on the bench seat that i normally would sit on and then behind it we have a little fireplace and a christmas tree and i hide behind the christmas tree and then i peek out and I do a shh or a surprise face look type of thing. I love that. And so that works out fine. And some of them, they'll do the first picture while they're sitting on my lap with their mask on, and then they'll take the mask off after that. That way they want to, uh, I guess, chronologically capture the 2020 moment. Yeah. You know? Are some kids more special than others, Santa, do you think? Well, they're special needs children, yeah, and they come and see me all the time too. And they're the they're very like very year loving round. You children. mean? Pardon me. You mean like year round? Y year round. See, because I am Santa, mm -hmm. and I am naturally fat, and I have white hair and a white beard. Uh, children come up to me all the time during the year. Well, if I'm out grocery shopping, or we're out at a restaurant, or someplace like sometimes even when I'm at the gas station. Yeah. Filling up the vehicles. Uh, oh, yeah. If I've been sniffing gas, yeah. I'll accuse somebody of being Santa. That's for sure. <laughs> so, so I always uh, have little coins or trinkets or things of that sort. I'll spend a moment or two talking with them, and then I'll give them something. Um, how did the spirit of Christmas kind of start, like, in your heart and stuff like that? Yeah. I've always loved children, okay? And that's the main reason that I do this is to... Uh, so the children will have the best experience with Santa as possible each year. One of the early Macy's uh, New York City Santas, his mm -hmm. name was Charles W. Howard, mm -hmm. and he's famous for having quoted the, or creating the quote, he heirs who thinks Santa enters through the chimney. Santa enters through the heart. Mm. And that's very, very true. Yeah, I yeah. guess it, there's a, there's an element of just keeping that alive in children, huh? Keeping that 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 ability for anything to be possible. Sure, everything's possible. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like a responsibility whenever you see the kids? Like, um, do you feel some like? Uh, is it hard to gear up and just show up every day and be Santa? Uh, the season does get long, mm -hmm. uh, and Mrs. Claus is always ready for it to end because she does a lot to help me get ready every day. Oh, does she really? Oh, yeah. She curls my hair and my beard with little mini hot rollers. Ooh, damn. And uh, damn. from the time I get into the shower mm -hmm. to the time I walk out the front door, it's a, about a two-hour process, and 45 minutes of which I'm sitting there with these curlers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and where'd you meet your Mrs. Claus at? I met Mrs. Claus in Virginia Beach. Oh, yeah. Yes. And it's been 33 years since then we've been married. And will um will Mrs. Claus kind of uh does she have like a favorite meal that she prepares for you kind of? Yes, cookies oh, all yeah. the time. Cookies, really? <laughs> so that's not just a myth, right? No, that's not a myth. 
I love every kind of cookie there is. So when the children ask me what's my favorite cookie, I say, I love all the cookies. I've never met a cookie I didn't like. <laughs> now, was there um, was there ever a time where there was, I heard like rumors and stuff that there was a time where some of the reindeer wasn't, you know, there was like, some of them was kind of struggling doing, you know, not drugs, but like just struggling with stuff that they were going through. Was there ever a time where they were going to replace some of the reindeer? Well, we always have reindeer in training, okay? Uh, for example, this year I've got two reindeer that are hoping to make Santa's reindeer team next year, and their names are Holly and Jolly. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, they're working hard. A couple of course, max preps out there. I like that. So they're kind of on the uh, junior varsity right they now. They're on the junior varsity. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so what kind of training and stuff do they have to do for reindeer because – I imagine, like, at some point, part of the element is you grant them the ability to fly. Well, that's through Wuffle Dust. You don't know what Wuffle Dust is? Uh-uh. Well, let me tell you. I think it's probably the reason I've lived as long as I live. A lot of people think that I go to deliver all the toys in 24 hours. They think that I go around the world this way, east to west, east to west, east to west, but I don't. I go north to south, north to south, and every time I get back to the north, I land at the North Pole. People don't realize that there's so many good children in the world now, and it takes so many toys to take care of them. Mm -hmm. I can't have a sleigh large enough to haul all those. So you got to make all those trips. So we make all those trips. There's, in, in the world, there's 24 time zones, mm -hmm. and we do one time zone every hour. That's how we can do the whole world in 24 hours. And when we land at the North Pole, here's what happens. Three right. things. The elves come out and put all kinds of more toys in the sleigh. Uh -huh. Mrs. Claus meets me at the sleigh. Uh, and gives well, me some coffee or a hot chocolate or cider or something like that. She'll prep you up. She'll yeah. kind of keep your oh, morale sure. up. And this special elf that we have who has the formula to make waffle dust, she comes out, and one of the things that she does before we take, take off again mm -hmm. is she hovers and she sprinkles waffle dust all over the reindeer oh, yeah, and all boy. over the sleigh, and then... Right there beside me on the sleigh is a giant bag of waffle dust. Oh, damn, bro. Okay? Because I'll tell you what, I travel to some of the places in the world, and the weather's just terrible. I mean, it's really, really bad. Yeah. And you don't want Santa and the sleigh sliding off these icy roofs. So what we do is we circle the house, sprinkle a little waffle dust uh -huh. on it, and that way the reindeer have sure footing whenever they land. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's great. Here's a question that came in for you right here, Santa. Here's a question from one okay. of our uh, listeners. What's up, Theo? What's up, Mall Santa? Just taking a dump right now. Oh, I want to ask, <laughs> Mall Santa, sir, what is the rowdiest uh, kid you ever had on? What What did they ask for? What did they do? And uh, in general, how do you deal with a situation like that, um, especially with parents there? Uh what are you doing? So, gang, gang, take dumps. Jesus. Well, the rowdy children, uh, I talk with them a little bit about not being as rough and tumble as they are, that that's just a big show that they're trying to put on, mm -hmm. okay? And as far as the children that ask for everything, because I have some children, they bring the whole Toys R Us book or whatever – Whatever, greedy. Whatever are they being book greedy? They're getting their toys out of. And they're being greedy. Oh, yeah, they're being greedy. I knew and it. And so what I tell them, I said, now, if the last little boy or girl that had come to see me who asked for everything, if I said, okay, I'll bring you everything, then you wouldn't get anything because yeah. it'll all be gone. So we all have to share in this world. Mm -hmm. And what do kids want over the years? What have you noticed that children really want them? Is there a couple of common gifts that really stand out? Well, over the breadth of time, I know each year there's kind of a novel well, gift. Believe it or not, every year I get a bunch of requests for pogo sticks. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, I do. Wow. And sometimes I get, I don't get so much anymore hula hoops. Yeah. But I get, even this year, I probably had 20 or 30 children come and ask me for pogo sticks. And is and there a, do you, go ahead, sorry. And of course, there's a lot of children that want the, the uh, Nerf guns, okay, mm -hmm. and that's fine. 
And uh, and if somebody wants a regular gun, do you help them with that, or is that you no, discuss I tell it with them the parents? I'm, I cannot legally bring them a real gun because they're not old enough. I see. Okay. I see. And uh, what's the oldest person that's ever sat on your lap? Probably 102 years old. No way. Oh yeah, I've had them all the way from three days old to 102. Years 102. Old. How long was that line to see? You, I wonder, huh? <laughs> well. <clears throat> You know, in the malls, there's a lot of long lines, okay? Yeah. So I try to move them along fairly quickly. And um, what did the 102-year-old want for Christmas? Do you remember? <laughs> she just wants to be able to see 103. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so she just wants a little bit of time, yeah, huh? Yeah, she wants a little bit of time. What's some of the cuter answers that little children have given you over the years, you think? Has it been? <laughs> well, I've had some... Uh, come and pull on my beard mm -hmm. and then realize it's real and run off mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they will, may have a set an expletive or two on the way out oh yeah yeah <laughs> uh i had one little girl who uh she was probably maybe six years old and i asked her what she wanted for christmas and she said coal and i looked at her i said you want coal and i looked at her mother who was standing there beside her I said to her, why do you want coal? And she says, diamonds. Ooh. She made the connection that if you crush coal, you'll get diamonds out of it. She's that long-term thinker. And, and her mama clapped her hand and said, that's what I'm talking about, girl. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> so she think he'd drop her off a bag of briquettes, huh? <laughs> yeah. Dang, man. Some of these women starting to think long-term, you know? <laughs> yeah, they are. That's one way to do it. Um do you remember me when I was a kid or no? Oh, I do. You were quite a handful then. Was I? Yeah. <laughs> I thought but I was. But you had fun. You turned out pretty good. Thank you. I would imagine in the North Pole there can be a lot of like things get to seclusion. And even in, you know, in cold temperatures, people suffer from depression sometimes and isolation. You know, and eventually even sometimes alcoholism, drug use. Do you guys see any of that up there? We don't have any alcoholism and drug use. But what we do is we have one of them blue light things that's supposed to help raise your mood all the time. So we have that. Oh, dang. Bring me one of those. I'll tie it around my dang neck. That's what I need. Now, do some kids, some kids freak out when they see you, Santa. Some kids can't handle it. A lot of time you'll see, uh, you know, mothers will put a picture of their child crying on Santa's lap. What's going on there? What is it? Well, some of them cry a lot. Some of them will cry a little bit. And some of them will just have a total meltdown. <laughs> How do you handle that, though? Like, what do you do at that moment? Well, here's what I do. I, if they put them on my lap mm -hmm. and they start to cry, I'll hold them as close as I can so they won't hurt themselves trying to get off and that type of thing. And then at the very end, before I let the child down, I'll also cry too. Because <laughs> that makes a good picture for, for the parents. Yeah. And then I'll put the child down and sometimes the photographer will take a picture of the child leaving <laughs> yeah with fear on their face sometimes now there's a lot there's like uh there's over the years you see a lot of uh santas that get you know they show them like on bad santa drinking alcohol and yep. stuff like that do you ever have you got have you got ever had to use uppers or downers or side splitters or whatever to really uh nope. get through the work week no not at all amen brother Amen. And is it ever, do you see it in the industry, though? No, I, I haven't seen it. Uh, not in the real bearded Santas that I see. Is there a lot of, kind of, not beef on the streets, but is there, like, a lot of, like, discrepancy between fake bearded and, and real bearded Santas? To me, there is. Well, there's, there's something not real. There's just there's something. There's a difference in the professional na professionality of them. Now, yeah. there are people, men, who have what well, they're called designer beards, mm -hmm. okay? These are made out of either real human hair or sometimes yak hair. Ooh. And once they're put on properly, you can't tell that it's not a real beard. Really? Okay, and there are some people that, and it's called designer beards, okay? Huh. Now, those Santas are just as professional as the rest of us that have real beards. Uh, it is the... It is the Santas that have the fake bellies and the fake beards and the fake wigs that are uh, of poor quality mm -hmm. that tend to be the ones that you have problems with. Yeah. Yeah, I think if people that aren't in it for the real, that aren't in it, that gotta, aren't gotta fully be in, in the heart. Got to be in the heart. If you don't have it in the heart, the children will see right through you. Wow. Yeah. 
yeah, if you somebody's getting all yacked out on that yak, I think that would be uh that's interesting. How nice is yak hair? Is it pretty nice? Oh yeah, and it's expensive too. It's right. like uh uh two to four thousand dollars for a good beard and wig set. Um dang. That's yeah, they're expensive. That's pricey, man. It is. And I don't even know where you would get a yak. I don't even know if they still make yaks anymore. I don't, it's like oh, yeah, they are. And, and there are people who service the Santa industry with suits, all kinds of other stuff that Santas need, as well as uh, beards and wigs if they need those. Um, where are some of the places you've been stationed at over the years, Santa? Like I know in, 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 in Santa's line of work, there's a lot of places you get called on to serve, basically. It's almost like the military in a weird way. It's almost like the, um, it's like the military of the heart, you know, uh, especially around the holiday times. Where are some places you got called on to, to, to serve at? Well, I've been in Orlando, Florida. I've been in uh, Wichita Falls, Texas. I've been in, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I've been in Novi, Michigan, which is north and east of Detroit a little bit. I've been in Modesto, California. Wow. Uh, it's a lot I've of I've actually spots. been in Nashville. Yeah? At Cool Springs Galleria Mall in 07 and 08. How was that? Was that fun? It was a lot of fun. I bet that was a big time, too. That was before too much technology when people were still really, I think there was a little bit more Christmas spirit out there sometimes. One of the people that came to see me, and I did not realize who she was at the time, and one of the elves working on the set said, do you know who that was? And I said, no. That was Hannah Montana. No way. Yeah, Miley Cyrus. Wow. And I did not realize it at the time. What she ask for? Do you remember? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Well, whatever it was, it seemed like she got it because she's been having... <laughs> yeah, she's had everything. She's had everything. Here's a question right here from a young lady. Hey, Theo. Hey, Mall Santa. Hello. My question is, what's the nastiest thing that has ever happened to you as a Mall Santa? Baby barf, you know, dog poop. What is it? What's the nastiest thing that's ever happened? Yeah, do you Thanks. ever, is there ever accidents with like children with a, I'm sure, huh? No, I've been fortunate over the years. I've not had too many accidents happen while they're in my lap, but uh, from time to time, a child will, will, Especially the really small ones, not the, not the older, the not the two or three year old yeah. who's who is uh, scared. They never vomit or anything. At least not. That's not been my experience. Sometimes the little bitty ones that I hold. Yeah, the ones with the head up like a this. little bit. Okay. Uh, I've had a few children pee on me. Oh wow! Uh, especially if they get excited. Now that's sometimes like where out on your chest or where? No, right here on oh, my lap. lap. <laughs> And what will happen is uh, they'll get excited, and then they just it just cuts loose. <laughs> That's oh. hilarious. And I guess the other, if you want to call it a nasty thing, from time to time, especially when you're towards the end of the season, and the lines are long, and people have had to wait in line a long time, and their children will end up wetting themselves. Mm -hmm. What upsets me is when the parent knows it, but doesn't tell me they just oh. plop the child down. Because I have what I call pee pads that I can put on my lap mm -hmm. to keep my suit from getting wet. And as well as to keep other children who sit there afterwards from getting wet. Safe, yeah. If they would just say something. Wow. They don't. Yeah, I was wondering what you would do. So I guess you'd put a pad out or put some flour out or something. No, what I do, I have little red pee pads so it matches my oh. suit. Ah, you guys think of everything, Santa. I have to. <laughs> All right, what's up, Mall Santa and Theo? Gang, gang. gang uh, what's up? Here's a question for Mall Santa. What's the um, the worst gift that a child's ever asked for where you thought to yourself, there's no way I'm getting you that? All right, thanks for taking the time to... <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas, man. That's interesting. Yeah, what is, what is it? What's, what's one of the gifts you're like, that's impossible or that's not even... Uh, I always am careful about when children are asking for gifts i never promise that i'll bring them x gift i'll tell them i'll see what i can do mm. and i always am looking <coughs> to make sure that what they're asking for is age appropriate yeah because sometimes 
they're wanting the same thing that an, an older sibling has, but they're not ready for that gift yet. Do kids ever ask for, or like teenagers ever ask for anything that's like perverse, kind of like, and you're kind of like, you can't have that. No, teenagers actually are are mostly pretty good when they come to see Santa. <coughs> the reason they're there is mom wants that picture with Santa every year. Oh. I've had some people that have been coming to see me 40 and 50 years. Wow. They've really? been coming every year to get that picture so they can give it to their mom. One year I was at, uh, when I was at Cool Springs, there mm-hmm. was a UPS guy who delivered to the mall on the very last day of the season. He and his son, who also works for UPS, would come and get that picture so they could give it to his mom and his son's grandmom. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So there's a lot of people, a lot of there's a lot of tradition people come through. Oh, it. sure. To Absolutely. have a part of the same tradition and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, have there ever been a proposal in front of you? <laughs> I probably had a half a dozen of them over the years. Yeah. And now, how does that usually go down when it happens? Do they let you know in advance? Is it kind of a does the is it a man usually, always proposing? Uh, all the ones I've had have been men proposing to women. Uh, we've do it, done it a bunch of different ways. Uh, when I was in uh, Novi, Michigan. I was in kind of the center part of the mall, and up above on the second floor was a caged jeweler. Mm. And this young lady was sitting on my lap, and her soon-to-be husband was up at caged jeweler, and he came out to the to the uh, edge there and ho- looked down and hollered to us, "Will you marry me?" <laughs> <laughs> and then he. Came on down the stairs in a hurry and came to the set and gave her the ring. Oh, that's cool. Uh, another thing I've had was uh, uh, they would come to the set ahead of time, and they would give me the ring, and I would have it in my oh, pocket. nice. And then they would be sitting on my lap, and and uh, I would always ask the woman what she wanted for Christmas, and then I would ask the guy what he wanted for Christmas. And a lot of times the guy would say, this woman here is the love of my life. And I'd really like to marry her, but th- things are really hard right now. And so I can't get her a ring. So then I'll reach in my best pocket and I'll say, well, just a second. I think I may have something that will help you out. And, oh, of course, give cool. it to him. And he opens it up. And she's all aghast, you know. Uh, wow, surprised. that's the magic right there, huh? And I'll tell you another thing that's happened is uh, birth announcements. Okay? I've had several people bring with them. Uh, to see me, and they will bring the sonogram of the ultrasound mm-hmm. that they had taken. And get and, you to autograph it or something? No, I would hold it up. They would be sitting here, and I would hold it up, and we'd be smiling, and uh, I would kind of point at yeah. it. Yeah. And people think you're the dad. No, 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 no. They don't, I don't think they think that, but anyway. I would Look, I'm, dude, if Santa was my dad, you know how excited I would be. <laughs> People would be like, what does your dad do? Like, uh, he works at the bank. I'm like, uh, my dad. Santa. <laughs> my dad's Santa. Wow, that's pretty magical. So there's really an element, too, of your job where it's just people, where you, there's moments where you're really involved in the magic of life. Yes. That's awesome, man. It's a lot of fun. I bet that's really awesome. Has there been anybody that's come to see you that's kind of been on their way out of the world, you know, that's leaving life and they wanted to come see Santa one more time? Yes, uh. It's not so much older people, Mm -hmm. but it is parents who bring their child who has a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. And I always have a special bell that I give to children like that. And about eight years ago, I had given one to this little girl. She had spina bifida and some other problems going on. Mm Mm-hmm. And about, uh, this was early in the season, and probably about a week or 10 days later, uh, the mom comes back, and she's just bawling in tears. And then I realized who she was. And she came back to tell me that her child had died, and she buried her child with that bell that I had given mm. her. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I think people, you you know, they look to Santa, I think, as like a symbol of like hope and oh yeah, love, you know. 
a symbol of magic, you know, a symbol of what else uh, could be out there that we don't know. From time to time, usually five or six times a year, I will have a child come to me and tell me, Santa, I don't want you to bring me anything this year. I want my friend or my cousin or my mom or my dad to get a special Christmas. Mm. Is that pretty remarkable when you see that when a kid asks? Oh, yeah, and, and here's what I do. First of all, if you think about children, most children are takers. They take stuff. They want stuff given to them. Oh, yeah. There are very, very few children that are what I call giver children. They want to give to other people. They don't want something for themselves. So when I, when that child, when I see that child, and we're done with the visit, I bring the parents in, or the parent if there's only one that came with them, and I'll say, do you know what your child, your little girl, your little boy asked me for? And they'll say no. And I said, I'll then tell them the story of what the child asked me for. And about half the time, the parents will know that they have a, that, that child's a giver child. Wow. About the other half of the time, the parents had no idea, mm. but they're thrilled that their child is that way and i said and i said and that's when i make the the gift of the bell to the child mm. i have the parent and the child there and i'm explaining to them what's what's transpired and i'll tell the child that every time you ring that bell i'll be thinking about you oh i love that yeah you know there's something special about just being that uh it's almost to get you're like you're like a middleman for um yeah, it's like you're like a middleman for some of the joy that's out in the world. Right. It must feel pretty interesting sometimes. It is. It's it's a uh, it's a lot of responsibility, mm -hmm. but it's uh, gratefully accepted responsibility. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I bet to just to have to be able to be like at work and have a few moments like that. Some people don't have moments like that in their job their entire lives, you know. So to be able to have that, and then also uh, not only just like take it and be like this is what i'm doing but take it and just act the part of being kind of just part of the current right. of whatever that and, good and, energy is and i've had children as well as adults that ask me to pray with them and mm. i will pray with them right there right there on the set before they leave amen are there a lot of good kids out there you think oh yeah there are a lot of great children out there i like your attitude yeah anything else we got for santa sean i think that's all man santa we know you're so busy you know, and we just thank you so much for stopping by. Um, is there any other messages you have for the kids out there? I just want you all to be happy with everything I bring you and uh, love what the elves have made you. Take really good care of it because it takes them a long time to make that stuff. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Let's uh, finish out this episode, and I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And uh, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And um Thank you for helping me be a part of this and being a part of my life. And I mean that. And um, and I love you. And be good to yourself. Because you deserve it. And I'm going to try to do the same thing. And may we all just have a be headed towards a wonderful new year. Amen. All right. Let's go out um, on this lovely special by Dusty Dex. Mm, that ain't doing it for me so let's go out on this special by timothy in finite joy to the world okay none of this that's also not doing it. let's go out um by uh oh come all ye faithful by gregory david and there you go that's trappy right there Hear somebody getting roofied in the background. Oh, 
I hope your uh, new year is a remix. I really do. You guys be good, man. Gang. Okay.